What is up, guys? Never know how to start these things, but okay, let's jump to it. So you guys know I like to start today with opening whatever I got in the mail that day because why the hell not? I'm excited to see what's in there. Now that I ordered all the stuff for the S13, we're gonna be getting a lot of the S13 parts in, so I'm really, really excited. So I don't really know what is possible sub mail and what's actual S13 parts. Pretty sure this is S13 parts, but I guess let's just dig into it. We'll start with the little one from China. Hey, <laughs> someone sent me another thing of deep painting tools. That's sick. Hell yeah. Ever ordered these? Thank you. Can never have enough. Right, let's see what's in here. I'm assuming a t-shirt. Alright guys, so I guess this is all from Jesse Ross. He actually has his own YouTube channel called SpooledUp.TV. They have, uh, I guess, the E36 Vert, A86, and a uh, RB25 Datsun. That's pretty cool. Shout out to his boy, James Huchman. I, I think that's how you pronounce it. <laughs> I don't know. I'm so bad at last names, but... Using the old like Datsun logo and putting a spooled up on I like that. You know, I as corny as some people might think they are, I love spin-off tees where they basically just re recreate an old logo, but that is sick. Send me hella stickers. Oh my god, that's so sick. You guys know I'm a huge Dragon Ball Z fan. Are just gonna love them. Spooled spooled up at bigcartel.com. Awesome. Thank you guys and good luck with your channel. And guess what they are? They're my E36 corner markers! As you know. We were talking about the clears. I like them, but I think they they stick out a little too much since the headlights are black housing. So I ordered the smoked corner markers to see how they will compare because I've been seeing them on a lot of E36s and I love them. So nice little simple smoke to it. Nothing too crazy. Matches the housing pretty decent. We're gonna try them on in a few. Some more stuff in here. Got the front sway bar and links. Steering shaft bushing, and then this is definitely my oil pan. Let me open it up so I can show you guys. This is my new oversized oil pan for the S13 or for my SR. Now the SR20s, a really big problem with the SR20s is they only hold probably like three and a half quarts worth of oil, which is like very, very little oil. And the oil pan isn't really baffled too well either. So when you start drifting, oil starvation is a very, very big problem. So with this, is it adds about another quart and a half, and it also has baffling in it with the with the little tunnels to allow oil to want to stay in the center, then just kind of swash off to the side. So it's actually really nice. It's stainless steel. I kind of like the harsh edges because it makes it fit a little bit tighter. It's funny because every time I see an oil pan, it doesn't matter if it's a $1,200 oil pan or $200 oil pan. They all have these funny little hinges on them. It makes it seem so cheap, but it's the way they are. Of course, guys, everything I need for the S13, I got completely off of Njuku Racing. They're always my go-to place. They literally have every nut and bolt I'll ever need for, for honestly, all my Nissans. They even have a bunch of stuff for D36, so you can't beat it. Of course, guys, check them out if you need anything. Can't beat their prices. I'll put the link in the description. Check them out. That looks so much better, guys. I usually am such like the, an anti-smoke person when it comes to like smoked lights, smoked tails, smoked anything. This looks so much better. Much better. You just showed up. What's up, Donald? What up? What up? So uh, Donald is uh, trying out a new job. He's in like the trial phase of it. Yeah. He worked, what, 15 hours? 15 long hours. That's why you didn't see him yesterday. Yeah. I missed you. It was a long day. It was. Like, I was going to come by, but... DJ's new manifold just showed up, and it's really, really nice. So this is a tubular manifold just like mine. His was like all the welds were reinforced. And it was done really, really nicely. It makes me want to get it done too. Any tubular manifold, I don't care how expensive it is, they always crack. I mean, there's a lot of weight supporting this and a lot of heat cycles go through it, but. So Don, I have gifts. Oh yeah, dude. I'm excited about this. Dun, dun, dun. The hardest. There you go. So this is a kooky SR20 notch top engine harness. And we got this from Randy down at the Eliminate Boys represent they hooked it up don needed a harness really really bad um extremely bad actually and it was kind of the last big piece of the puzzle so this is going to help accelerate don swap by quite a few weeks so randy dude we appreciate it so so much you guys know the eliminate dude so check out the channel I'll put the link in the description they're right. sick as shit so, so ah this is so nice dude wiring stretch these harness dude such a hookup for real dude. i'm so pumped dude oh i didn't show it but Here's it with the trim all back in, and it actually looks super clean. I know it's dark, but look at it. That's fire. Look at that is sick. Let's get to work on this. Woo-wee. All right, guys. 
guys. I might do this with the engine still in the car. I just pull the whole steering column. It's a lot easier. It sucks, but it's a lot easier. There's a, actually a lot of dampening in this bushing, but uh, having that nice rigid feel is nice. Trying to get any amount of play out of your steering is, a, is, is key with these. Things. It's night and day difference. Definitely a good upgrade. Right, so this just slides out. Then this slides out and there you go. DJ always hides my stuff. Old, new. I'm fucking thirsty. James, fetch me a drink. Fuck you, Donald. Fetch me. And new. We should paint this. Let's paint this. Just took me literally forever to get all this stupid grease off of it, but time to scuff it up and paint it. Let's know the steps. Primer, scotch, paint. All right. Use that high temp black, just because it's probably like the strongest bake spray paint you could probably get. The wrinkle black stuff is so strong, but it takes forever to dry, even with a torch, so. This should work pretty well. All right, everyone. You probably would have never guessed. RJ has a girlfriend. Sorry, right, Gwen. <laughs> Just wanted to put that out there. All that stupid steering shaft is drying. We're gonna install my new oil pan right quick. So obviously this is the new one. You can see there's a higher capacity to it. The old one is just this little little pan right here. It's just stamped steel. Dude, I gotta drain the oil first. I know, I heard you. <laughs> Oh, st stop! Give me the, Where will the no, no! Stop! I'm not cleaning that up. Yeah. Steph, give me that. No! Where stop will? this! <laughs> oh, 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 oh! That's clean oil, at least. Uh, oh! Oh, well, there I didn't it is. Drop it. What the? Oh, it's magnetic. Look at that! No metal shavings. That's always yeah. nice to see. Oh, right here. Donald, taste it. No. Let me, let me know the proof. I'll do it. That's tempting. I got five bucks. Yeah. Yeah. Put your tongue on it. Just half it. Just half it. Ew, don't do it. Five bucks. It's not worth my dollars. You're gonna get cancer. Oh! oh! <laughs> You're gross. <laughs> what do you think the weight is? What's it taste like? Ten forty? Uh, it's like ten thirty-ish. <laughs> Jokes on you. It's T five. Right, right. We're doing great. That one's just really tight. Snaps off in the oil pan. Like Donald's windshield. Got him. Jimmy takes one swing at it. No, he can't come in. I already got it. Yeah, we'll get. We'll let Donald just did. Give me this. Yeah. You're a barbarian, dude. That's how tight this thing is on. It bent the whole oil pan before it even <laughs> split. Yeah, it's fine. What? I'll pry on it. You're gonna. You're throwing this away well, anyway. You stopped right? me. Killing me. Just don't damage the upper. Don. Don. Catch chill. It, catch it. We out here. Nice job. All right, guys. Look how look how little look how little capacity this is compared to this. Look at well, it's not you know. It's the same. Oh. That thing's like a it's like an ashtray. It's so small. Take all the old RTV off. You're stubborn a lot today. Am I? <laughs> <laughs> you mispronounce. I know. I'm. Mm, I just have those days, as okay. you guys could probably tell. But yeah, clean it off. Then all we have to do is uh, re-RTV this one and put it on. I always end up using way too much RTV because I get all nervous and shit. You're good. This would suck to have to do in the car. So technical, so crazy. All right guys, so the oil pan's on, it's all tight, and that's it, easy peasy. In the car, it's a little bit more difficult, but it's doable. Donald, let's see a nice hit. Come on, big one. Get a juicy one, chief it. Not impressed. <laughs> You want some Rotella in there? No. I have a headache now, asshole. <laughs> for SRs, red is usually my go-to for the valve cover. I mean, red is like my favorite color, and I think it looks great. I love like that Nismo look. As you guys can tell, I did it for the SRZ. I still have to pick a color for my valve cover for the S13. I want to do something different, so I want to let you guys. I want you guys to tell me what you think. I know last time for the SRZ, a lot of you guys were in the purple or to gold. Honestly, I don't think I could do purple just because that's Drew's wave, and I'm not trying to. You know, I'm gonna let Drew have that one. So anything other than purple. I'm totally down to do red again, but something different would be cool. I'm really feeling green this time. That's, you that's what you should do. Green? Green. Green. Percent. Forest green? Forest green. Perfect. So I'm really feeling green. Let me know if you what you guys think. I'm, green would be cool. So I went to pull my valve cover um, to check out underneath the valve cover, of course. And uh, shocking discovery. One, it's a little sludgy under here, like whatever, but that's that's really cool. I don't think it's supposed to be loose. Oh, that one's That too. one's loose too. That's it's not the greatest thing to see ever. <laughs> that is that is <laughs> I don't even know what to say about that. 
not stoked. Interesting news. I checked basically the torque on like every single bolt and quite a bit of them are loose. I would say literally half of them are quite loose. Not finger tight like these ones were. These were literally finger loose like this. These are probably at like probably a solid eight foot pounds. It's pretty bad. I don't know what's going on. It's really, really upsetting. Like I got to pull my caps off the cam to see if there's any damage because of it. Luckily, the end caps were all tight. All the end caps were tight. The, the middle ones were loose. I have no idea why that would have happened. Previous owner put the rocker stoppers in and just didn't torque them afterwards or if he was just doing a good old guess and check on them. I don't know. My cams are pretty scored up too. As you can see, like right here and right here on the intake side. So maybe the oil squirters, maybe the oil squirter is a little clogged and not getting enough oil to them. Who knows? We got to take it apart to find out. All right, guys, so I decided just to pull it, and uh, so I, I have it, all my timing stuff marked, even though it doesn't really matter too, too much, um, just because I'm basically redoing everything. Um, I got a TDC, all that good stuff. I got to basically remove my cam gears, and then uh, we can move the chain out of the way, and uh, the chain shouldn't be able to jump, jump, jump timing on the crank, just the way the SR setup is. Just pull the chains off to the side. Move everything, and there you go. Easy peasy. Completely neglected the fact that my SR is actually missing a few of the retainers. Now, there's supposed to be a shield that bolts right here. There's supposed to be a shield that bolts like actually right here. There's two retaining shields that bolt here. I don't know if it's like a splash guard or what it's actually used for, but it's actually completely missing. So that makes me feel great. <laughs> I have to, what the hell is going on with it? So, oh boy. You're doing really good today, DJ. Hold that just like there. Got a one intake cam. One exhaust cam, under a decent amount of pressure. Ew, poor SR. Does it tie that there? Now I can pull all the caps off. I did beat the piss out of this engine, and honestly, I got this in my original coupe, and uh, I had no idea the history of the car at all. I tried contacting the previous owner that had it because I kind of got it as like this middle deal of someone else in the, in the means of getting it. And the guy wouldn't tell me anything about the car because he was being a cuck. And uh, so it's a, it's a mystery, but she always treated me very well. Sorry, don't say no. It's not bad. It's not amazing. It's a loose one. Let's see. Oh, there's no excessive wear. It's not like amazing, but there's like nothing. Nothing excessive on it. It's crazy, it's just like aluminum valley, that's all it is. As you can see, there's a lot of scoring on the whole cam, actually everywhere. All the lobes are scored pretty decently. That one's pretty bad. The exhaust side, on the other hand, uh, looks um, in way better condition. Uh, the, the most expensive part of an SR20 is the bottom end. You can, you can get heads, mint heads all day for like 150 bucks with everything. Accessories are cheap. The bottom end, on the other hand, the exhaust side looks great. Looks fantastic, so at least there's that, but it's not that bad. Um, the the scoring on the rockers are definitely polishable, so we'll be fine on that one. The cams, however, doesn't matter because got new cams, so sweet. So I'm gonna leave the rest of the head for another day. I need to I need to clear out a nice clean spot that I can put all this stuff, especially when you start pulling your shims out and your rockers out. You really want to make sure your shims are marked specifically to each cylinder. That's very very important. So. I'm just gonna wait on that, but we, we see, we were able to inspect some stuff tonight and it's a little sludgy, we got a, a few scoring, but you know what, so far, it's not that bad. So my cam seats, they're super clean. There's no scoring at all, and that's really the important part with that, because that piece is actually on the head itself. The caps, there's a little gro they're a little groovy on the intake side, but uh, nothing to be concerned about, and those are replaceable anyways. Check up on your cam caps and <laughs> make sure they're not loose from your previous Doto owner. And that's about it. So let me go back to what I said I was going to do and throw the steering shaft back together. All right, so this part's super easy. I painted the steering shaft and it looks pretty good. I'm really happy about that. So we got our new aluminum bushing. I took the little collars out of the rubber piece, put them in. You stagger them just like that. And of course, you just get your plate, stick it on, put your little bushing in there little plastic retainers and then just slip it on get it just like that we're gonna put all the one right on top and I cannot find my plastic retainers for those but we don't need those right now we're gonna tighten it down and that should be together all right guys so now this is bolted on I can't find my little plastic bushings for this side but 
I'll find them eventually. So this piece, we're just gonna bolt back onto the steering column. Just like that. And there you go, it's done. But I'm gonna keep this out because I realize it's probably better to have this out when we paint the engine bay, so no biggie. But now that we have the new metal bushing in, our steering should feel a little tighter, a little bit more vibration, but any more stiffness in the steering, I'll take because with drifting, you want your front end as responsive as possible. Now guys, if you wanna do that with your engine still in the car, there's like kind of two ways you could do it. You could either just pull the whole steering column, which I suggest is probably the easiest, or I've seen people that actually drop their subframe a few a few millimeters or so it gives you some play to pull the joint off the steering rack and then you could pull that off the firewall. Now, good luck with that one. The part itself is cheap. I think it's like 20 bucks, but the response of it is actually very, very good. So good luck with that. So today we got the new corner markers on and it looks so much better. I'm such a fan of the smoke corner markers, even though I usually am so against smoke stuff, but that looks awesome. We had a little SR scare, but we're all set. We'll be perfectly fine in the long run. And we got our little steering shaft bushing like half it but that's it i hope you guys like today's video so you guys know the deal like comment subscribe oh i'm falling stay tuned for more content and good night